Welcome to Raising Relationships, a podcast by the South Carolina Infant Mental Health Association. Here are your hosts, Tiffany and Damaris. Episode six, here we are, tying a bow on this journey on raising relationships. If you're just finding this show now, welcome in. Definitely go back and listen to our series starting at episode one, because it truly paints a picture of infant mental health in South Carolina. And the great work done by Skema, who, by the way, is responsible for this whole podcast and giving us space to have these conversations. You'll recall in the last episode, our conversation with Courtney and Christopher, both amazing, one an educator and one a mental health consultant for infant and early childhood mental health. And both of them really helped us learn a lot about what motivates them and the supports available. So today, for our final episode of the season, we turn to the teachers specifically, because they are the ones who are with children day in and day out. But before we do, remember this clip from Dr. Mackenzie Soniak? Because that's essentially what infant mental health is all about. It's by pouring into somebody else's emotional cup, into their hearts, and and really being able to see them and be with them in really difficult times. Pouring into somebody else's emotional cup. But you know what they say? You can't pour from an empty cup. Yes. And remember this clip from Shanti last episode too. First thing I did was I got in touch with his teacher. And I was like, Micah experiences this. He he cries. You know, he whines. This this is Micah. She said to me, I have six kids and they're all different ages and I should be able to handle it. Now, I'm really hearing that teacher say, I have six Six kids at any given time. Six kids who need attention and love and support. So yes, that cup can run dry if the teachers aren't giving themselves the time and space for self-care. And that's where we bring in Brittany Gandy with Be Well, Care Well. We are so excited because we have a wonderful guest to introduce today. Her name is Brittany Gandy, and Brittany is the program manager for Be Well, Care Well in South Carolina, which we will talk about in just a little bit, and has been part of Be Well, Care Well as the program manager and part of the team for three years. She is highly motivated and a compassionate certified health education specialist. She brings solid knowledge and practical experience in health promotion programs and health education to her role as well. And Brittany's ability to provide comprehensive health education promote wellness among adolescents and adults, and improve individual health needs is making a difference in this community. Mm -hmm. She earned her BA in public health and her BS in sociology from College of Charleston, and both an MS in health education and behavior and an MPH from the University of Florida. Thank you so much for being with us, Brittany. How does it feel to have all of those letters after your name? (laughs) (laughs) I love learning and going to school, so. That that shows. Lifelong learner, I suppose, huh? Absolutely. (laughs) Well, we are, like I said, so thankful that you could be with us today on the podcast when we are talking about expulsion in preschool and early learning settings. And we would just really like to start out by getting to know you a little bit. So who are you personally and professionally, Brittany Gandy? Yeah, so my bio kind of summed up everything I was going to say. Um, but yeah, I've been on the team with Viva Carol for three years. I was a well-being coach for uh, two years and the manager for one Um, Like I said, lifelong learner, went to College of Charleston for those two degrees and then health education and became a certified health education specialist. And during the pandemic, I got bored. So I was like, let's go back and get an MPH. (laughs) Why not? (laughs) Right. Why not? So um, just professionally, that's me. But personally, um, I'm a daughter, I'm a fiance, I'm a dog mom, and then I'm also a mentor here in Charleston. So there's a lot of great things that I do. That is so awesome. Are you from South Carolina, Brittany? Yes, I'm from Florence, South Carolina. Wonderful. Born and raised, huh? Raised, yes. 
And Brittany, I hear your bio, this wealthy bio. I'm just, I just can't wait to get to know more of this life learn, uh, lifelong learner in front of us. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, you know, in all this learning, in all this education, um, what really led you specifically to this field of early child care and education? Okay, so prior to joining Be Well Care Well, I worked with children in college. Um, so I have a great understanding of like the role of teaching and being in that teacher role with the, you know, the daily routines, the opportunities and the challenges. Um, right. But with also studying public health and health education, I really find interest in like community health, um, yes. specifically about communities that are, you know, often not talked about and that face many struggles that I do believe that health education and um, public health can really advocate for and provide resources and interventions to overcome um, certain things. So when I found the opportunity to merge public health and early care and education, um, I didn't want to miss out on that. So <laughs> this uh, early care education is not a population that often comes up in public health. So often when I'm talking about it in my classes, everyone is really interested in how I can mix the two. And I do exactly that with Be Well Care Well. I love that, Brittany, how you are able to marry the two, right? How they can really, I mean, you're you're having the same conversations when you're talking about early care, early care and um, education, and you're talking about public health. It really is a perfect blended marriage. I love how you were able to do that. And I can tell how you brought your passion to that marriage. And so um, you, I hear you mention Be Well, Care Well over and over again. Can you even explain to us what is that for the folks that don't know? Yes, yeah, so Be Well, Care Well is an amazing program. Um, it's a well-being program for ECE providers in South Carolina, and it is designed to support and promote child care providers' well-being so that they are better equipped to provide quality care to the children in their care. Mm, so important. Yes. Tiffany, I know we have more. I, look, we're so curious, Brittany. There's so much we want to know. But in listening to you talk about this word that I've heard you, I've heard it in your bio, and I've heard it now in your description of Be Well, Care Well, how would you define wellness? I just hear that thread keep coming up. So in Be Well, Care Well, we use the eight dimensions of wellness as our foundation um, to provide techniques and things. So of those eight dimensions, we focus on like the physical, the emotional, a little bit of everything with our teachers. And as part of Be Well Care Well, there are five well-being coaches statewide that are paired with a child care program and they tailor different wellness activities that will help not only the program, but the teachers and whatever that they need. So when it comes to wellness, it's not just physical and nutrition, which often that's what, you know, we first think about, but it's also your environment. It's also that social wellness. So being able to connect with your team members and your parents and your children. So there, there's a lot of things that go into wellness. It's definitely not just one, one thing I can pinpoint. Wow, I love this. I love this holistic uh, of view of wellness. Tiffany, what questions do you have? Again, listening to Brittany share about Be Well, Care Well. Well, those eight dimensions of wellness really stick out to me. And I'm just wondering, when you go into centers and you're talking to administration and educators and all of the folks um, that are working in those centers, how do you impart all of this information to them about wellness? How do you get them to buy in? To buy in. So part of the Be Well Care Well program, we have a well-being activity guide, which has different activities that they can um, take a survey to kind of tell the well-being coaches what they're interested in and they choose exactly what they want to focus on. So it can be team building activities. Um, it can be stress relief activities. It can be a little bit of everything, um, including maybe just hanging out with the team uh, after work for gatherings. I think my favorite is probably our walking challenges, our step challenges and our water challenges that we do, um, especially water, because as easy. It's very easy to forget to drink water when you're as busy as a child care provider throughout the day. So having yeah. them think about water differently and be intentional is always really great. But the buy-in is definitely letting them know that there are more than one way to just focus on their wellness and they can do it in very creative ways with us. It sounds like it's individualized. I like that, yeah. that each, each, center, each administration can really decide what are the needs of my team and how can I best meet those needs. So 
I love that. Yes. And being able to accomplish those goals in a really small amount of time too. It's not too hard to drink a glass of water. You can check that off and know you did that for the day yeah. or taking that walking challenge, you know, parking further away yeah. as an example. Right. Yes. It's doable. I agree. It's very doable. And then we also provide like different different tools. So like a water bottle. So they get a Bewell Carol water bottle that they can have, um, you know, within their reach to take in that water. And then we provide like fit trackers so that they can count their steps. And, you know, it's always How really cool. fun for them to get up and start walking and stuff. So. I love this. Not just the information that you're providing, you're also providing the, the practical, tangible resources to say, we want to support this so much that we'll give you what you need in your hands to be able to do it. And yeah. you, I, I was going to highlight this when you first came on this morning. I was like, you're, you're absolutely crushing that water challenge. Like, oh my God, her skin is glowing. And so again, I can tell you're <laughs> crushing that water challenge. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yes. The, ev- the evidence is there. And so I wanted to, I wanted to state that. Thank um, you. <laughs> So, so with this promotion of wellness and self-care and giving this really individualized approach to it, I know you've seen that when that does not exist, how it really impacts teachers, administrators, and because we're talking about infant mental health, um, how that will impact the children in the classroom. So like, how have you seen that lack of self-care and that lack of wellness really show up um, in your teachers' day-to-day lives? Yeah, so I often see it in impacts like their stress levels. So when there is a lack of self-care, it becomes very difficult to manage stress or even respond to certain stressors that the teachers, you know, may face. And um, without the, you know, with the lack of, if you don't have support, if you don't have the techniques to really know how to like, like how to face this, how, how do I know how to respond to this? If I've, I've never been given that resource. So that's the uh-huh. way that I see it. And then often, often with the stress levels, it's more than just lack of self-care. Often teachers face a lot of symptoms and related to stress. So maybe less patience, maybe having increased headaches and lack of sleep or low energy. So when you're highly stressed, it's really hard for you to show up 100% to give your all to your children, to your parents, and to your coworkers. Such a great point, Brittany. I love that. Yeah, I'm I'm just thinking about myself <laughs> and how I have been at that place where I'm really depleted. And I don't have to take care of a dozen, you know, young children um, simultaneously. That would be really hard. And it really kind of ties into the major theme of what we're talking about on this podcast, Brittany, and that is early care and education has high, high expulsion rates. So we know those expulsion rates through the data are directly tied to teacher perception and teacher perception can be heavily impacted by the amount of stress that they're experienced, mm-hmm. experiencing, just like you said. Mm-hmm. So how have you seen high stress levels in educator educators impact their capacity to meet those needs of the children in their care? Yeah, so I've seen it in a way of educators may misunderstand challenging behaviors of children. Wow. Or just that the it contributes to like struggles with communication. So whether that's communication with the child or communication with coworkers or communicating those behaviors to parents where you're highly stressed, um, Sometimes you may say the first thing that comes to mind and that's not oh. the best. It's not always intentional. So I've seen it that way. And now, like I said earlier, when you're stressed, it's really hard to show up 100 percent. Um, all of the child care providers I work with in Well Carol, they truly, truly love what they do. But when you're stressed, it makes it very difficult to do the day to do day to routine with your children. And get absolutely. Quality yeah. Care. That makes so much sense. And I just think back to, I was a mental health consultant for several years and I would go into early care and education sites and I would provide emotional support um, when it came to young children, right? And uh, specifically to the adults that were caring for the children in those centers. And so many times I would see that, you know, um, really high ratios Mm -hmm. 
or the teacher turnover. So it would affect the other teachers or, um, you know, all these different scenarios that often happened in these sites where it would cause so much stress. And I would see it trickle down to the care that was given to those children. Right. Um, I, I remember seeing just more of a harshness sometimes. Amaris, did you ever experience that in your work? I did. And as you were talking, Tiffany, I just, I, I'm, I'm helping, like my light bulbs are coming on thinking we've never looked at how stress levels impact relationship building, Mm. right? And we're talking about raising relationships and how hard it can be that when you're stressed about your colleague who is no longer with you and you're and you're having a sub here and there. And and we know I, I can remember directors that I've worked alongside of who are not only having to sub in the classrooms because of shortages, they're having to take care of the lawns, they're having to be the cook, they're yeah. having to do multiple roles. And even that level of stress from an administrator or a director's level trickles down to the teachers, right? Right? And so then you have this strain in the relationship between uh, director and teacher, and then that's going to show up between teacher and child. So I just, I, I could just, as you were talking, I was like, oh yes, stress really could have a negative impact on these relationships that we know are necessary for, for healthy social and emotional development um, of, of the children in the classrooms. But I love your emphasis, Brittany, on you know, making sure that you're inserting those, those uh, techniques, those tools with the teachers because their wellness matters. Right. And the thing about children too, they don't quite understand why their, their teacher may be responding that way. Um, the, with the turnover, with the challenges child care providers face, the day must go, go on. It must uh-huh. go on. But if they have the strategies with, you know, that they need, and, you know, once they start to realize that their well-being is a mirror for their children and how they interact with their children, what their children see, then it becomes a priority to to focus on themselves so that they, you know, so that we can increase these rates that, you know, we see when it comes to expression and behaviors. Yes. Children internalize that. Yes. They internalize that. And they automatically, a lot of times, think it's their fault that they did something wrong. Okay. So to think of the idea of being able to take that out of the equation potentially with some self-care is just so enticing and would be so good. Um, I think of the ripple effects, the positive ripple effects. Absolutely. Brittany, I wonder, you know, in the work that you've done, being that you've been there at Be Well Care World for three years and you've done a lot of work um, at at a a manager uh, level, but also direct one-on-one level, I wonder if you could share a story with us about a time where you really saw um, the positive impact of the work that you do um, in in a teacher's life. And then again, how that really, that ripple effect that Tiffany's talking about, how did that flow to the classroom? Yes. So Be Well Care World is actually like one year participation. And what we see often is that, you know, some teachers are excited yet hesitant to participate sometimes because they don't know what to expect because, you know, it can seem like another thing to do on the to-do list. But, you know, we make it fun. And some um, some things I've come in contact with my centers is, you know, really taking in those self-care practices, those team building activities, um, some things I've seen our teachers focus on, like money management and financial freedom to really understand mm. their finances. Um, they've improved their nutrition pra- practices, whether it was individually as a team and all that overflow to the children, which I always think that's so amazing. Um, some other things I've seen is, like I said earlier, the teachers honestly realizing that their well-being is important not only to themselves, but to their co-workers, to their children, and even their families, because, you know, they work all day, but they still have to go home. So if you're, 100%. You know, if you're stressed all day and that energy trickles into your home and it's just an ongoing cycle that doesn't always feel too well. So, you know, being able to see that and be well, care well, and, you know, in the work that they do, when we do our visits, um, when they begin to talk more about the activities that they're doing rather than, you know, the coaches coming up with activities, that's always amazing to hear from the teachers. 
Oh my gosh. I, I love the, the this multifaceted level of support that you offer. And Brittany, when you mentioned, you know, even helping them with the financial planning, I almost, I, I, I had this kind of, you know, I was trying to look up some um, some numbers because what we know is that our, our child care educators are not paid a livable wage. Yep. So, so you can't imagine the, the roles and responsibilities they had have in the classroom don't match the money that is coming into their homes. You mentioned their own homes and their own stress levels at home. And so I love that you guys are even thinking about their finances and how that stressor again can, can translate into their wellness. And so I, when you said that, I, I I really wanted to stand up and clap. I know I can't clap right now, but I wanted to clap because I love just how intentional your team is being about every, again, this holistic view of our educators and meeting them at every place of need. I love that. Mm -hmm. Financial health. I mean, it makes so much sense to be part of the equation. It's such a stressor for so many people. Mm -hmm. I agree. We are so excited about the services that you are imparting in South Carolina. And like we said, the ripple effects that are going to come from it and that you're probably already seeing, right? When you think about Shanti's story about Micah and you think about the predicament she was in and some of the experiences she had as a mother in South Carolina, do you have any advice that you would give to someone like her? who is facing similar struggles. Yeah. So first of all, I applaud her for advocating for herself and her child. That is so amazing to, to hear that and listen to that, to get all the support that she needs. Um, but my advice, you know, there, when I was listening, there seems like she noticed that there was some disconnect between, you know, administrators, teachers, and staff. And my advice would be, you know, it's helpful to wonder how the wellness of teachers is being supported because that's good. You, yeah. As I say that, that's just straightforward. Yeah. It is. It's important to, to wonder about that. Like how, how are teachers being supported so that they can better understand behaviors of children and not, you know, take on their own understanding or, you know, apply those labels that she talked about and everything. So um, it seems like she's re really into like providing those resources. So if there's any time that, you know, she knows of a program and wants to advocate and share that with those teachers. That's something I definitely would give advice on. Yeah, that back and forth interaction where everybody is essentially taking responsibility in parenting this child, right? right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, it's it's a team approach, right? And I love how you're highlighting we get we have to think about every player on the team. We have mm -hmm. to think about Micah. Mm -hmm. We have to think about his mom, but we have to think about Micah's teachers mm -hmm. and how are they being supported. So I love how you're you're making us think about each person. Um I know when my son, whenever I would email his teachers at the beginning of a school year or whenever we were having issues throughout the semesters, right? I would always end our emails and hashtag Elijah reminding them that we're all on the same team. We're all on his team. And I love how, again, you're, you're promoting this. And with us being on the team, we have to be mindful of each other. That's a part of relationship building. And so um, thank you for that piece. That is so very true. And I just, I'm also thinking about not only the teachers, but the administration, mm -hmm. the people who are really kind of making sure that the ship stays afloat. Right. And how oftentimes in ECE settings, you don't see a lot of support built in for that administration. Mm -hmm. um, how do you support them in those moments, Brittany? How, what does that look like? Yeah, so part of just well-being, um, the director is usually the face of all of that for the center. They kind of are the leaders of starting the creating that cultural wellness for their teachers, receiving that uh -huh. buy-in for Be Well, Care Well. So, you know, just talking talking with them and receiving some insight of like, what would you want your center to look like? What things do you want to implement? What are some things that you all are struggling with? So often stress does come, come up. And that's usually the first thing I like to tackle. Like, okay, let's talk about stress. Let's talk about you know, what, what, what happens? How do you respond? How does the team respond to stress? And what are some right. things that we can do? So definitely getting that buy-in from the directors so that, you, like we mentioned earlier, to have that trickle-down effect, it'll go to the teachers and then it'll go to the children. Mm -hmm. Yes, it will. Absolutely. 
what we know for our educators, like Tiffany's mentioned, our administrators and our teachers, when COVID happened, you know, they really were left to figure out how to survive, to really be able to, you know, like Tiffany said, keep that, keep that ship together, hold everything together. Cause like you said, life still had to go on for so many. So mm-hmm. any, anything you want to share about that particular time frame that might've been unique? Oh, that time was unique because I think at that time I started September 2019. So maybe I was like four or five months, maybe six months in to be with your oh. So, so it, it was different. One, because with Be Well Care Well, you are hoping to see all your teachers in person. So to yeah. not have that opportunity to connect with them and to really really give them those struggles. Like we basically had to change around our format to say like, you know, maybe, maybe you can meditate, but it's just going to look differently in the pandemic because there are other stressors that's going on. You had your, absolutely you had the personal stressors. You, there were so many things to worry about the pandemic. It wasn't just work at that point. So we started to expand things that we offered. So, you know, when the financial freedom come in, we we pro- uh, provided trainings on that. We provided resources on like food distributions and um, things that they could go out and get that didn't cost a lot of money because, you know, one one week the center maybe was open and the next week maybe it was open. Yeah. So it was a lot of ups and downs, but we made sure we stayed connected. We had a lot of group messages. We used a lot of apps to, you know, continue to build that relationship and let our providers know that, you know, we were here to support them regardless if they were at home or at their center. And, you know, we were just here for them. I love that the maintaining connection in the middle of a pandemic. And and the reason I I thought about it was we were talking is that I, I recognize now that Micah was a part of those children who were in these centers and in these learning environments during the pandemic. I'm just thinking about the fact that you meet them where they're at, Brittany. Yes. You meet Mm -hmm. them where they're at. So it sounds, to use Amaris's word, individualized. Um, But not only that, the part that sticks out to me is that all of you, meaning the Be Well, Care Well folks who are trying to preach self-care, had to be really doing that for yourself in order to successfully do it for others, which is hard. You said it earlier, you said mirroring. You said we have to mirror for for them, this self-care. That's a good point, Tiffany. That is such a great point because I think that's when I realized that I was not doing self-care all that amazingly so. <laughs> so yeah, I honestly, it became a thing like you, you had to practice what you preach, like how, you know, how can I, you know, tell my providers, give them this advice if I wasn't following the same thing. So that's when I really started to, to realize that I need to practice self-care too. <laughs> so. mm. We all do. Yeah. We all do. This has been, this has been a, a, a lesson learned for me. I'm actually, I, when we wrap up, I'm going to grab more water. And so it really, I mean, it's, it's, it's almost infectious that when we start talking about wellness, when we start talking about intentionality and self-care, mm-hmm. it becomes contagious that I, I want to be well because I realize that my wellness impacts you right. and your will, your wellness impacts someone else. Um, and so thank you for that understanding that uh, we, we all have to be thinking about how we take care of our own selves and our wellness. Self-care could save the world. Right. I agree. <laughs> A new hashtag. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's start it right now. Brittany, we are so, I mean, I, I am so energized by this conversation. And again, this intentionality behind wellness. I, I wonder as we've had this conversation and you shared so much of your personal and your professional life, I wonder, is there anything that we did not ask or something that you want to make sure that we leave this audience with today? So most importantly, um, you know, we like to say you cannot pour from an empty cup. And I just want to put that out you know, out there for providers and, you know, whoever may be listening that you cannot give your all if you're not giving your all to yourself. So it's important to practice self-care. And I think my favorite, it's important to set boundaries. It's okay to have boundaries in life and to say no and to just really focus on yourself in in your work and what, you know, providers do for children. Because like I said, they love the work that they do. Um, It's just often that the support is needed. So. 
Mm-hmm. Boundaries. Yes. <laughs> Boundaries, hashtag say no. We have all these new hashtags. I, That's right. I, 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 I want to highlight something that I've heard you say twice, Brittany, that I'm grateful for. What you said to us is this uh, reminder that our educators love what they do. Yeah. And they love the children that they serve. Mm -hmm. And I think that's important to highlight, especially when we're having conversations around um, expulsion. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to villainize the educators and not uh, be reminded that they love what they do. They chose that path for a purpose and for a reason. Um, And then when we have folks like you at Be Well, Care Well, who can help them focus on their wellness but we can we can see less expulsion rates. Yes. So so thank you for that reminder for us that they love what they do. Brittany, I just have one more question for you. I'm wondering if there are any resources that you know of that you could just throw out right now if someone wanted to start taking small steps towards self-care today. Today. Okay. So there's a lot of resources, but I think I'm going to do a shame plug. So Be Well, Care Well makes newsletters and we have well-being calendars every month. Um, So, you know, it's something that we have, but there are small things out there on the internet and Pinterest and social media where you can just do one small activity a day to just practice self-care. It doesn't have to be anything big. It can be a small meditation, something that's 30 seconds, two minutes. However, you know, one feels comfortable. But um, I would say use calendars, use YouTube um, as a resource. And also any resources that Be Well Carol could provide, we're always here. <laughs> Thank you so much. That newsletter sounds like it would be really enriching. Yeah. How can people get a hold of that newsletter? Oh, we can send it out, of course. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> so they just need to get a hold of you. Yes, just get a, yeah, a hold of me. <laughs> Well, you heard it here, folks. That's how it's going to be. We are so excited that that newsletter is available to people right now. Mm -hmm. Also, just something that I found recently that I have found to be really helpful with self-care is a specific app. It's called Finch. And on this application on your phone, uh, you grow a small bird. It's a baby when you first get it, but you grow it by doing self-care. And it's little things like drink water make my bed. Sometimes the goal is get through the day. But every time you complete one of those goals, uh, confetti comes up, which I just personally love, but then you're growing your baby bird. And so it's actually uh, creating an opportunity to help this baby bird grow. So anyway, just a little fun plug for Finch there. This sounds really nice. I'll have to check it out. Yeah. I am so glad I have space in between this meeting and my next, which is a form of self-care, creating some space between our Zoom hops um, to go get water. I did not make my bed. So thank you guys for all these self-care tips, because again, you're you're helping me to be well, and I'm grateful for that. And so um, that's what I'm going to do because... I need to do those two things. So Brittany, I'm just, um, you have a glow about you um, that really just, again, it it, it seals this point of taking care of yourselves. Mm -hmm. And as we fill our own cups, oh, we just get to overflow and pour into others. And I can tell that you do that. So with such excellence and with Mm -hmm. such sincerity, um, that's so evident. So thank you for being with us today and sharing you with us today. Of course, I'm happy to be here. Thank you so much, Brittany. And I just have to brag on the whole Be Well, Care Well team a little bit. I have had the privilege of getting to know them a little bit, and they are all amazing, and they all bring different things to the table, which is so cool. Um, They're also a tight-knit group, so they work so well together and really do show what good self-care looks like. Yay. Thank you. I appreciate it. (laughs) Thanks again, Brittany. We've got one more episode of Raising Relationships in store for you. Don't forget to share the show and review it on Apple Podcasts. Raising Relationships is made possible by the South Carolina Infant Mental Health Association. More information about Schema and other resources can be found in the show notes. Thanks for listening. This podcast is produced for the South Carolina Infant Mental Health Association by Story Studio Network.